first in, it's Emma Billington. Hello, Emma. Hi, Howard. Hi, how are you doing? Are you all right? Yeah, slightly nervous, but I'm fine. So am I. So we're, <laughs> we're here together and we'll be nervous together. Uh, you work for Dogs for Rescue. That's right. Tell us about Dogs for Rescue. How did it start off? Um, we started over four years ago now um, with the concept of not wanting to run a normal rescue, but one where the dogs could live free. So uh, what, what is a normal one? Oh, a kennel-based one. You know, like you imagine a rescue to be dogs in cages yeah. and, you know, long strips of them all looking very sad. So it's like a family life, but there's loads of them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you cope on a day-to-day -day basis? It's fun. Um, it's lots of other things, but, and it's challenging. Well, we invite them round. Obviously, some people have children, so that means certain dogs wouldn't be suitable, things like that. So we kind of interview people or rather get to know them, have a chat, talk about their working hours, how much activity they like to do. You know, some people do love the long walks, and if you've got a three-legged dog, that's not ideal. So, you know, we try and match people. It's a bit of a, a dating system, really. Or you could have a one-legged person, and that wouldn't be very good either. That is true. We do have some disabled people yes. as well. Sometimes. So how would they cope? Uh, with, a, with a type of animal would it be a special kind of animal you would suggest definitely everybody um is suitable for a certain dog and there's always dogs suitable for everybody so people sometimes write themselves off thinking they're too old or they're not able to walk miles um, and we will work around that and find them because there's so many dogs in rescue we're just desperate to help as many as we can so you've been going four years what was it like uh, initially when you started off it was a bit scary because a lot of people said you couldn't do it. Dogs couldn't just live together. It hadn't been done. Um, we did have a lot of obstacles to overcome to set it up. And then it was kind of our reputation was built on how we managed it. But the dogs sell us now because they're such nice dogs and they've, they're so well-rounded having lived with us. Well, I'd like to advertise the name of the company that you belong to plus the address and phone numbers and email addresses please that's great yep yeah, it's dogs number four rescue you can find us on facebook we're on twitter as well we're on instagram and um, we've just got a youtube channel you can follow where we've got all the videos and things and the website's www.dogsnumber4rescue.co.uk if you want to give us a ring it's 07412 361 769 just do that phone number a little bit slower because if they're getting the pens out they won't be able to do it it's 07412361769 so i'm going to say what's your favorite breed of dog or you can't say that can you oh i can it's the oh, staff God. and anybody who follows us knows it it's they're definitely my preferred choice of dog and the question is why uh, it was the first dog I rescued, um, didn't know anything about them. They are the babies of the dog world, they're the eternal children, they get such bad press, they, they are the choice of um, people who are tend to treat them, you know, not as they deserve. Um, and they really have um, an unjust reputation. And one of my main issues is trying to change people's perceptions. And I'm actually managing it, showing that they are family pets, wonderful. They take the most amount of abuse and they die in their thousands every week in the pounds. We save who we can, when we can, and we're trying to change people's opinions. So how many dogs per week would you have within your, your work? Um, we usually have 20 to 30 um, at home, um, but we have saved up to a 1,000 now in the four years we've been going. Obviously, the first year was quite slow because we were trying to convince people, but everybody who knows me and watches what we do sees the animals and sees how well we know them, so they can trust them. It's not like going somewhere where you wouldn't know what the dog was like and they couldn't tell you how it was with the cat or, you know what I mean, how it is on a lead. So how are you funded? Um, we run a daycare, it's called Daycare for Dogs in Withenshaw. It's been going 10 years and we knew we had to get something to fund it. And we get no grants, no government support, none of the big charities or anything like that. So we run just off the profits of that and then we've got some supporters who'll pay like a pound a month to support us. Um, we call them our Golden Paw Club and we send them a newsletter every month with all the behind the scenes stuff. And there's so much goes on every day that we can't fit it into the Facebook group. Even with all the videos we produce and everything, it literally is a non-stop action so we try and fill them in on all the background so stuff. 
Give us an, an average day that goes on. Oh, there's nothing to do with an average day. Well, well the other, a day. Well, yesterday it was four hours of mucking out the horses, um, and then one of the dogs jumped in and tried to join us and ended up knee deep in that. Mm. There's just, I mean, they make us laugh. Then we're doing bath time. Bath times a laugh. It's just. So how do you do twenty odd dogs in one go? Or? We don't do them in one go. No. no, it depends. Some of them are very clean and will avoid all the mud and puddles yeah. and just run around the fields in the dry bit. And then you've got your little staffs that are like little piggies rolling in the mud. Just love to get themselves covered as soon as there's a bit of mud. You say that so you've got all these animals. Oh, is this a farm you're on or is this a, a domestic home? It's Yes, it's a farm, but it's also a home. So we've got a couple of acres, which we've turned into an adventure playground. The dogs are out there running through tunnels, up hills, and, you know, we've made it all ourselves. But at night time, they all come in and sleep on the couches and we've got lots of living rooms for them and we separate them into groups so they're not all in one big pile but yeah they live together i think they're so well looked after i think the humans want to live there <laughs> some people do <laughs> <laughs> well you do it is it's really yeah. good fun yes it's yes. sometimes uh yes it's sometimes tiring yes. but in a good way yes. and would you charge if somebody does obtain an animal yes and um, we charge between one and two hundred pounds depending on where the dogs are from yes um, the dogs cost us at least double that yes. for each one um so obviously that's where the funding comes in yes and uh, d would people give you more than that if, if they can afford it? Um, it has, has it happened occasionally. Um, it's not something that happens all the time, but we are very grateful of everything um, because obviously we are just donation um, sourced. Now, you told me that virtually every day, how do you wind down? How do you have a, um, a I mean, how, how do you have time to buy food or, or just go to the shops? It is difficult. Usually when Lou's going to the vets with one of the dogs um, she'll nip by and get the local things or we have some helpers from daycare coming up to help us. They'll stop off at the shop on the way and get us supplies. It literally is it's that, that hard to get time out. Um, one of my friends cooks for me a lot because she's worried about us. Yes. <laughs> so it brings around a, a week's worth of food for me. To so she's looking after you, you're she, looking after yeah. Yes, the dogs. that's what she says, yeah. So, uh, apart from the dogs, you say you've got horses. What else yep. have you had? We've got rescue goats, pigs, chickens, sheep, turkeys, um, cats, ferrets, rats, rabbits. I think that's all. Yeah. So, who's your vet? Um, it's Earlham Animal Clinic and Rebecca, and she's absolutely wonderful. She can sort out all our farmies as well. Um, she comes up to the farm all the time. She's there for us on the phone. Literally, we'll ring her at 11 o'clock at night asking her questions. She's brilliant. So is that your um, biggest worry, isn't it, uh, paying for your vet bills? It is our biggest expense, and your it was expense. something we didn't really expect. Yes. But with dogs, obviously, there is issues that come up that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. We saved Bella from the pound. We didn't know she had a prolapse and then she's got a low blood count and she needed scans and all these things when we took her out we didn't realise but obviously yeah. we're always going to be yeah. there for yeah. them. You, you can't be insured because it's too many to insure so exactly. you're literally paying as you go along. We do. So what happens when it's a very large bill? How do you cope with that? Well we're I mean, we've been very lucky. Our followers, we've got 16,000 on Facebook. If we're ever absolutely stuck, we do say, please, and they will always come forward, but we try not to pester because everybody's got their own charities already, haven't Okay, they? well, if somebody would like to uh, phone up and have a chat uh, with Emma, it's 0161 793 29 Double four. I'll do that slower. Seven nine three two nine double four. Or if you want to get us on the email address, it's studio at Salford City Radio uh, dot org. Uh, why not phone us up or email? Billingson. Uh, she works for Dog for Rescue. Hey, I've said it. I've said it right as well. I put the mic up. It helps. Um, I mean, what time do you get up in the morning looking after all these dogs? What's, what's your normal regime? Well, they set the alarm at usually about six with the excitement of it maybe being breakfast time, even though we don't generally do breakfast till nine, but they get ready <laughs> early. <laughs> so what do they run around? and? Uh, they just start barking with excitement. Yeah. It's like, they, I don't know, when it becomes light or something. Somebody sets the alarm off, and because they all live together, once one starts, yeah. that's it, they're all so off. who's the naughtiest, the little ones or the big ones? Always the little ones. Yeah. Everybody wants a little dog. And yeah. honestly, they are the hardest of all. They're the snappers, aren't they? They're, you know, when they're the walking the dogs. Yep, they never stop their energy. They say, well, I've only got a small house. I need a small one. They say, you want a calm one. You want a big yeah. one. Yeah. It doesn't matter about the size of the house. <laughs> it's true. And what's about owners? Because I was saying this the other week, that you can see a dog 
and he's got sort of a grim little face and he's a bit chubby, which they shouldn't be, but they are. <laughs> but the owners tend to be similar. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I dread to think which one of my dogs they say I look like. <laughs> <laughs> How many dogs have you got? Uh, at home, there's 20 to 30 at any one time. But your own personal dogs? Well, I lost my girl this summer, um, so... The dogs I tend to have now are the ones that can't be rehomed. So we've got Sherry with the two legs, um, because she was shot and paralysed. Um, we've got Jessie, who's blind. Um, we've got big Winston, who's a big St Bernard, who had his ears and tail cut off, and he's got a fair of strangers. And it's those kind of dogs, then, that end up being mine. <laughs> but I bet they're the nicest. Oh, they're wonderful. I wouldn't change them at all. So, obviously, each animal would need different diets. Does this cause a problem? No, we've got a box with Sherry's food on. We've got the other stuff that if they're on raw food, that's in the freezer. And we, we know them, you know, because they live with us. It is just like having 20 or 30 of your own dogs. Whereabouts is the farm with, with, with the dogs on? It's between Eccles and Earlham. So it's up on Barton Moss. So we've got a good couple of acres and no close neighbours. And what is the actual name of the farm? It's Nursery Farm. So if anybody's thinking in the future, because I think now's a good time to obtain a dog if you want to train it or because the days are getting that little bit longer now. We noticed it didn't get dark till nearly five o'clock yesterday. It was great. It makes a massive difference. That hour is amazing, isn't it? I'm very susceptible to the light. I don't like the dark days at all. None of us do, but I really hate it. Mm. And... um, it, that hour was brilliant. So if you're thinking of getting a good dog and you want a rescue dog, uh, you are the one to go to. We've got every kind of dog, age, size, breed, coat type, colour. Come to us, we'll find you the suitable dog for you. And as I say, it is the right time now to start thinking about um, buying a dog because the day's getting longer, we're getting into the spring. The, uh, um, hopefully we'll perhaps get warmer days after February and it's great isn't it and it's, it's get great you walking, get you out walking get you out walking but to get used to your dog and the dog to get used to you mm, absolutely and we do a fostering program as well if anyone tell wants. us about that well people who work full-time say and feel like they can't have a dog and um, they come and borrow a dog at the weekends it's great for our dogs gets them some one-on-one it helps you time. as well yep helps us gives us one less dog to worry about during the weekends and it gets them out and about and people are likely to meet them and fall in love with them when they're out walking and does that happen that they get properly um, bought after that? They, yeah, they... yeah, all the time. So it really does help get them out there rather than expect people to come down and visit them all. And, and the people that foster, they must feel terrible giving it back at weekend. They, at they the miss end of the weekend. Them, yeah. But the good thing is they see the dogs coming back in all happy because mm-hmm. they're seeing their friends, it's their home. To them, it's not going back mm-hmm. to a kennels or anything. So they, they find it very yes. rewarding, actually. And who would do the, the veterinary side of it then? We take care of it all for the foster dogs. Yes. We provide the food the bedding, leads, harnesses, everything and instructions and we just match um, our fosterers with the dogs that are more suitable for them. And who would pay for all that? We pay for it all. Do they make donations to fo- the people that foster? No, they don't. They no. don't have to? No, not at all. Sometimes if, they'll buy the food for yes, them or yes. they might send them back with toys. They've bought them yes. and special yes. beds and things like that. Yes. They, and they follow their progress then and they share them. And, you know, it really it really helps. It gives people a good uh, quality of life having a pet for the weekend. Mm. It's, it's very rewarding. It sounds too good to be true. <laughs> well, we're just trying to get the, the message out there. OK, well, give us, again, your email address, your proper uh, farm address and, and, and the phone number, but nice and slowly, please. <laughs> um, well, it's 07412... 07412- Three six one seven six nine, and it's all appointment based. There's no parking at home, so we need you to give us a ring if you want to see any kind of dog, or just have a chat with us, or tell us what you're after, or if you want to start fostering. Um, look on our Facebook page; that's the most up to date that we've got. So we're Dogs Number Four Rescue, and its website's DogsForRescue.co.uk. Now I've got an email. It says live shouts. I can't praise them highly enough. Who is it? Uh, come and have a look. Uh, it's Bernard499. Oh, Janet. It's, uh, her name is Janet. Ah. So do you know who that is? Well, we've rescued nearly a thousand, but I do have an idea of who it might be. If it's Gina's mum... Hi, and thanks for that, Janet, but it could be somebody else. There is a lot well, of them. whoever it is, it's so kind of you to write to us. That That's wonderful. Absolutely. But there you are. Well, these dogs and, our, and the people who come to us to rescue dogs are our major selling point because they tell everybody, and really it's recommendations now that we get people coming to us for. So how do you get a dog from Romania? 
Well, they come on a massive bus uh, full of them. Um, the street dogs over there have the most horrific times. And we're working with some. Um, one the other day, it's been with us a year and a half. We've only just managed to touch her for the first time. These dogs are, some of them, extremely traumatised. Yes. Whereas others are ready to go to go to homes. They make lovely, wonderful, so gentle pets. Is it to do with the age that they are nervous or just literally because they've been badly treated? Badly treated, that's oh. where generally they'll have had bits cut off or shot or beaten. I mean, they are killed there by beating them to death in the pounds. I know that sounds awful, but unfortunately that's the reality yeah. of them. Yeah. They don't get a chance out there. It's a good job it's not television because my face just yeah. dropped right down. That's awful. But, um, yeah, it's been very interesting talking to you. Um, perhaps you'll advertise on Salford City Radio when uh, things turn around for you really well. That's what we're hoping for. We're hoping to get an actual centre set up where we can, you know, obviously we'll have a car park, we can run events, you know. And we've proved that it works and that the concept is sound and that there's a demand out there for these kind of dogs. So now all we need to do is just keep moving things forward. And if somebody wants to make a donation, what would the address be for that? Um, well, the PayPal address is the same as our email it's dogs for rescue at live.co.uk and we're very grateful and anybody wanting to join the golden poor newsletter just drop us a line send us one pound a month and we'll put your email onto the news uh, news feed and you'll hear all about all the antics that go on that we don't publicize on facebook <laughs> all right emma thanks so much for coming in oh thanks for having me